Well, before it even dropped, Netflix's new show Neon found itself embroiled in a bit of controversy. After all, how could a show that follows the trials and tribulations of a young reggaetonero on his path to fame allegedly not include Puerto Rican voices in its conception when the island, along with Panama, helped to pioneer the genre and take it to new heights? Well, after a few course corrections and the participation of reggaeton leyenda Daddy Yankee himself, Neon is finally available to stream. And while the criticism about the reported lack of Puerto Rican participation was warranted, it doesn't tell the whole story of what the show is trying to achieve in the first place. You see, Neon isn't a story about the Pareo born in Puerto Rico. Nor is it a story about the reggae and espanol produced by Panama. It is a story about the global, pan-Latine sensation that reggaeton has become, a genre that has long been expanding beyond its Caribbean origins. As such, the show takes care to not wear any particular ethnicity on its sleeve, although the main character is Puerto Rican, instead setting the main stage in Miami, which has become a hub for reggaeton artists from around the world. It's clear, then, that the goal is to appeal to as many communities as possible and tell a story that can speak equally for young reggaetoneros growing up in Mexico and in Argentina. And in that aspect, the show succeeds because of this. Despite the sometimes dire situations the cast finds themselves in, the stakes remain relatively low throughout the entirety of the first season. Even the season finale, which ends with our main trio in yet another industry debacle, feels like nothing more than a minor setback. Perhaps this can be attributed to the nature of streaming, in which showrunners are uncertain of whether even the best-made shows will get a second season. As such, a lot of character and plot development that should normally take place over multiple seasons gets crammed into one. This definitely feels like the case with Neon. But despite these flaws, the show rises above them. It's ultimately anchored by its strong leads and supporting cast, a bevy of cameos, and above all, heart. Co-creators Shea Serrano and Max Searle do a good job making our main characters feel real, and the trio's bond is ultimately what drives the show. Neon also does a good job tackling important issues within the crossroads of Latinidad and music, including the whitewashing of Latine pop stars and the debate over authenticity within reggaeton. And speaking of authenticity, the featured artists go a long way in helping keep the show authentic. As mentioned earlier, although Netflix got a lot of heat for the reported lack of Puerto Rican participation behind the scenes, in front of the camera is a different story. Neon features cameos from Puerto Rican legends like Joel, Ken Y, and of course Daddy Yankee. But more impressive is the amount of up-and-coming talent out of PR the show gives a spotlight to. Bray, John Z, and Liano all pop up to help move the plot forward within the first three episodes. Jaco and Villano and Alano also get to flex their acting chops, with Jaco's character of Javier Luna appearing throughout the season to lend a refreshing air to what could have been a one-note antagonist-type character. This star-studded approach translates to the soundtrack as well. Neon goes out of its way to paint a sonic picture of the diverse genre that is reggaeton. To achieve this, Netflix hired reggaeton artist, historian, and podcaster Caitlina Gata Eccleston and music writer and Los Angeles columnist Susie Exposito as consultants. And it shows. From mainstream bops to heavy-hitting trap to party anthems, the music featured in Neon is just as much a part of the narrative as what's happening on screen. So, is Neon a perfect show that will satisfy everyone? No, because in trying so hard to appeal to everyone, a lot of the regional specificity, the saison, is lost. And because of that, we don't get as much flow, we don't see as deep into the genre and the scene as we could have if the story would have focused on a specific region. But what we do get is a good show about music, dreams, and the friendship that fuels it all. And if Neon does get renewed for a second season, I think Sani's story is the perfect vehicle for a deep dive into the individual regions of reggaeton, their unique cultures, and their histories. And given how season one ends, it seems that's what the showrunners are building up to.